Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another Gadget Wide production. Now, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and cover a bit more of the RC1 update, the Release Candidate 1 update, and um, which involves Gadget Wide version um, 1.2.6.04. That's a revision 4 of 1.2.6 onto version 1.2.7. 1.2.7 being the final build and uh, the build that will go out into the public. So this is actually a release candidate, release candidate one, and it's going to be a uh, potential release for you guys. So I am still internally testing the product and uh, I am, uh, uh, you know, uh, testing it on various devices. So. I'm actually uh, recording the outputs of my tests here and I'm just playing it to you guys. So in this video, I'm going to be uh, running GadgetWide Cloud Control, the new uh, 1.2.6.4 version on a iPad Air. Now this iPad Air is uh, the latest iteration of the iPad series from Apple. And this iPad Air is a GSM model, which means uh, it uh, accepts uh, SIM cards right there. Now, uh, basically what that's for is you can use this iPad anywhere you go and have internet access through your carrier. And that, could, that may be either CDMA or GSM. And uh, you don't need to have a Wi-Fi hotspot to get online. The device is always online with LTE connection speeds, at least here in the U.S. with T-Mobile. So uh, this device is currently iCloud locked and, and it is put in lost mode. And uh, I want you to notice up there that there it says it said there are bars and it shows LTE. Now that's an out of the box configuration. It's configured that way regardless, lost mode or not, for you to be able to activate the device. Uh, even if you don't have internet access because uh, it actually just connects to its internal uh, cellular network and gets the product activated. Now, uh, previously what we noticed was if I bypassed an iPad Air, um, I would not get cellular service. Now that's primarily due to the baseband and the baseband, um, the baseband is essentially confused. I don't want to get into the whole technical aspect of it, but um, that issue was the same in uh, both the iPad and also in the iPhone. Now, uh, in this version of GadgetWide, I have resolved the cellular issue as I stated in the previous RC1 videos. And as I also stated in the previous videos that uh, the uh, application works universally with all devices. Now, uh, uh, with that being said, I am here showing, showing you the demonstration of GadgetWide version 1.2.6.04, that's GadgetWide Cloud Control, running on an iPad Air with iOS 7.1.1, and um, here we go. So first, first off, I want you guys to see that this iPad is connected to this dock right here. This dock is basically just connected to my computer. You see right there, there's a little USB right there. That's connected to my computer. So essentially what this box is, is uh, it's my computer. That's just basically my computer. So this is connected to that and that's connected to my computer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this device. And it's uh, iCloud locked. So we can't get far with this. So let's put this to the side. And uh, Prior to running anything, let me show you my host file. The host file, uh, in the past, people used various other methods to bypass. Now, with GadgetWide, you never needed any type of line in your host file. Everything was, uh, and still is, um, run internally and is automated, making it easier for you, the user. So as you can see here, we have nothing here as well. It's completely blank. Let's close that, uh, running at zero kilobytes. So now look at the location here. It's in this PC, local disk, Windows system, 32 drivers, etc. This is a Windows 8.1 Pro machine. 
and uh, this version of Gadgetoid is running on this machine. So that was the uh, host file. And just for the record, guys, today's date is um, Sunday, June 22nd, uh, 2014. Let me zoom in there for you guys so you guys can see that. There it is, Sunday, June 22nd, 2014, okay? Uh, now, let's get back to it. Let me zoom out here a little bit. All right. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how this bypass works with an iPad Air GSM model. Let me close this. Now, typically... Um, you guys, well, you know what, before I jump to that, uh, like in all my other videos, I have a, a timer here. Now, uh, what the purpose of the timer is, is basically to um, give my viewers a reassurance that I'm not cutting or chopping up this video in any way, and uh, it's just one straight uh, stream. Um, we're not pulling anything over your eyes, we're not pulling the wool over your eyes, everything is legitimate, everything is as I see it. So uh, there is no uh, film modification, there is no nothing, and that timer, um, it, essentially, it basically um, you know, uh, serves as uh, a type of reassurance for you, the viewer. So uh, let me go ahead and start that timer now. So that timer will remain consistent and will continue to run throughout the remainder of this process. Okay, so here we go. So first we'll run iTunes. Now this isn't the order you need to do yourself, but this is just for the demonstration purpose I'm showing you. Now uh, iTunes here says activate iPad. So there's a message here that says this GSM iPad Air has been lost. Please call me at 555-1212. Now I'll zoom in there so you guys can see that as well. This GSM iPad Air has been lost. Okay, so we see that. Let's zoom back out. And that same message, I believe, is displayed here. It says, this GSM iPad Air has been lost. Please call me at 818-555-1212. Okay, so let's put this back here. Slide to unlock, and we're on our typical screen there. This is the nightmare screen, isn't it, guys? Okay, so... Get iTunes out of the way. Now I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and simply run GadgetWide. Here's the splash screen. It's done loading. And I'm going to hit continue. Here's the app. Guys, I mean, this is just so simple. I mean, it's never been easier ever. One click, easy solution. Okay, so. Um, like I stated in a previous RC1 videos, we have a not working option here for you. Now, the reason I highlight this feature is because this not working for you uh, the option here, basically what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and tailor fit an execution of GadgetWide to fit the, uh, how should I say it, the, based on the diagnosis of a previous failure. So if you ran GadgetWide and it failed, well, this is going to take that into consideration and look at all the variables and see why it failed. Now, uh, that's, that's going to go ahead and use the, um, uh, the variables from your computer and from your uh, iDevice as well. So it's going to take those two into consideration and re-execute GadgetWide in a manner where it best uh, resolves your issues. So it best fits your particular device. Now we're hoping that you guys don't use that too often because GadgetWide should just work out of the box. Um, but it's good to know that it's there. Um, so now uh, I also want to point out another uh, new feature which is the lightning bolt here. Now this lightning bolt um, gives you seven service modes. Now what these service modes are for, now uh, the service modes, these are primarily I would say for commercial users or large business users. Not too much for the average home user, but the average home user can use it as well. Now if you, could if you want to take notice here, it says, um, let me 
it's getting a little bright there it says service mode one so each time you press that lightning bolt it goes from service mode one to two to three to four to five to six and then seven now these service modes um they will allow you to um run the uh server aspects of gadget wide internally let's say for example your business or your corporation does not want to connect externally to any network or or, or connect to anywhere externally then uh, you now have the option to host your own server for gadget wide and uh, have the gadget wide user agent respond to your particular uh, servers uh, uh, posts and responses now the user agent strings I will make available so uh, the community can go ahead and develop their own uh, servers to respond with gadget wide's user agent and um, this uh, feature is actually sec for security wise is a wonderful wonderful uh, uh, you know point to add to the product and uh, people can now run things you know completely internally and never connect to gadget wide by by any means so um, without further ado let's go ahead and run this bypass okay so let's look at the device one more time it's in lost mode and uh, the timer still running it's been consistent now on gadget wide let's go ahead and click on start now um, start now now we're gonna wait till the bar to, for the bar to turn green. Should be just a second now. Okay. Now there is a message that says it's not the authentic server, which we know because it is gadget wide running. Now look at the iPad instantly. There we go. Did you see that? Instantly bypassed. And look, we have T-Mobile service without any configuration or anything it immediately bypassed the device okay so let me uh, I'll come back to this I want to show you something on the computer now take note of the message we have here on iTunes iTunes is saying an update to the carrier settings for your iPad is available would you like to install it now so what's nice about this is that all of the uh, normal services that are offered to this device from Apple, from the carrier, from whoever it may be, uh, remain the same. So it appears as though nothing has changed. It appears as though this device has been genuinely activated and you get all of the normal uh, features that you should be able to get on your device. So that's fantastic. Everything, you know, seamlessly works. So the device is now basically bypassed. So it's it's done already. So we can go through this little process here. Set up as new. Uh, skip this step. Let's skip that step. Notice that we do have service. Agree, agree. Let's not add a past code, continue use siri don't send get started now guys um i am not connected to a wi-fi hotspot it's using the internal cellular connection this is an ipad air running ios version 7.1.1 cellular t-mobile general about and there we go guys look at that isn't that beautiful so let me see if we can make this a little more clear for you guys to see. T-Mobile 7.1.1, fantastic. Let's look at the iCloud settings. Blank, clean slate. That's just lovely, I, I, I am, I'm ecstatic. I mean, this is great news. So this device is ready to go and we'll also go ahead and test the uh, internet service to uh, see uh, if it is working. So blank slate let's go to apple.com and uh, as you can see it works just fine it's loading and, and loading on LTE so the internal connection is working just fine no errors look at that isn't that beautiful guys it's, it's just it's working perfect okay so 
Um, let's go ahead and put this to the side and set this up as a new iPod. Hit continue and syncing iPod. Um, I should just take another another few seconds or so and let's hit get started. And that's done, guys. So we can stop Gadget Wide. And there you have it. iOS version 7.1.1 on an iPad Air GSM successfully bypassed using Gadget Wide version 1.2.6 revision 4. So 1.2.6.04. Uh, RC1 uh, preview, internal build. Guys, uh, look, here's the uh, reason why uh, I, haven't, I'm not, I haven't just released this version out to the public right now. This new RC1 build has a whole layer of services, Windows services, that need to be installed on the computer in order for this to work properly. Now that... Uh, also increases the download size of the file. So I would say it's about three times the size of what it used to be. And uh, it must add this layer of services onto your machine in order for this to function properly. So currently, um, those are the minor uh, issues that I'm ironing out. And as soon as I get those uh, working flawlessly, I will go ahead and deploy this out to the public and you guys can start using it absolutely for free. Uh, so I'm basically left at deployment. So I need to make sure that the uh, deployment of this is static uh, all across the board, works the same running from Windows XP all the way on to uh, Windows 8 and working on all devices. So I have about, I have all, all of that part done. Uh, Device-wise, everything is working fine. I do have the uh, issue of, of GSM activation and CDMA activation done. The most important things are done. Now the deployment strategy is being put into order and that's being finalized and you guys should have this product as soon as possible. Guys, thank you for watching this video and please rate this video and um, please leave your comments and please visit www.gadgetwide.com. That's www dot gadgetwide.com you can also visit our chat room at www.gadgetwide.com slash chat and have any uh, type of uh, conversations or you know anything of concern with the community because the community does know a lot and the community has been helpful to all of us it's been a help to me so uh, i'm sure the community can help you as well when this product comes out or even right now Guys, thank you for watching again, and please visit www.gadgetwide.com. Again, this was an iCloud bypass on an iPad Air GSM, fully functional. Guys, thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.